On the evening of Jesus' crucifixion, Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy member of the Jewish council and secret follower, asked Pilate that he take ownership of Jesus' body. Pilate acquiesced, so Joseph purchased a linen shroud and, together with Nicodemus, another follower, took him down from the cross and hastily laid Jesus in a tomb, his own tomb. Although we don't have absolute proof of the location of Jesus' tomb, the archaeological and literary evidence argue strongly for the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is located at the site of an ancient Jewish cemetery in a limestone quarry outside the walls of Jerusalem. The other site is known as the Garden Tomb, and though no archaeological evidence has been found, it shows us what the tomb might have looked like at that time. From scripture, we know it was hewn out of rock. There was a large stone against the entrance. The tomb was a large room as several people could walk in at a time and it had never been used before. In a village, the tomb should stand alone as its own landform, as its own building. And I would like for the stone door to be mobile so that it can be closed between Good Friday and Easter morning. This is the tomb that came with my Resurrection Village set. And I really like the tomb. I like how the top is flat and you can put an angel up there. I like how round the stone door is. I like the little lamb. I like the flowers. I like how narrow it is. There's so much good going for it. The only problem I have with the tomb is that it looks a little flat, especially on the inside. It just looks a little fake. You can't look to see that it is empty. And that is one of the most important things about a resurrection village is that there is an empty tomb. And this tomb just doesn't allow for that kind of storytelling. I think what I'm going to do is remake this tomb so that it is more like a little room. And that when you look inside, you can actually see that the tomb is empty. I'm also going to make a tomb where the door can open and close because I just think that would be so cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out the tomb as it is now. And I'm going to enlarge it just a bit. So now I need to find something round that I can use as a template for the door. Lemonade, anyone? It's really the perfect size. So now I'm going to sketch out how wide and deep I want the tomb to be. And here I'm making a form so that my plaster can lay on top of this form so that it can keep a tomb-like shape. What I'm doing here is I'm taking some painter's tape and I'm folding it in half and I'm placing the sticky end on my paper drawing. And I'm also leaving the rest of the sticky side up. Um, sometimes this can be tricky because the tape does what it wants, but you can totally get it. Next, I'm putting bubble wrap inside of the painter's tape parameter, and I'm just going to be stacking the bubble wrap up to the height of the tomb. And I'm just taping as I go so that the bubble wrap stays in place. As you can see, it also wants to do what it wants to do. And I'm comparing it to my original drawing to make sure I got the height and the width correct. Next comes the plaster part. I've got some bounty paper towels that I've soaked in water and I've wrung out and they're sitting on the side and I'm mixing one part plaster Paris with one part water. I'm taking the paper towels and dipping them into the plaster, swishing them around, making sure that they're completely covered in this plaster. I'm going to then lay the sheets of plastery paper towels over my form. What you're doing here is you're creating what will be a hard shell so that your decorative plaster can sit on top of it. I'm doing about three layers on the tomb. That way I have enough stability so that I can put an angel on top. I've got the tomb door template and I'm just pushing in the inside so that I know later where I'm going to make my cuts for the tomb opening. The shell has been drying for about eight hours. It's still kind of damp, but it's hard. And this is a good time to go ahead and remove the form so that the drying process can continue from the inside. This is why I love bubble wrap and painter's tape. It comes out so easy. Here's the inside of the tomb. So what you'll want to do is grab an old knife, any kind of knife, and you'll want to start in the center and work your way downwards, kind of fan out as you cut. If you cut from one end to the other, sometimes the plaster can buckle on you. I'm just cutting out the doorway to the tomb. I'm making my favorite village plaster recipe here, and I'm also following my tips and tricks. I'm gonna first plaster the inside of the tomb. What this plaster will do is it'll be a nice smooth coat to go over that plaster shell. 
it's important here not to press down too hard because we don't want to crack that shell. So it was a little bit challenging just because of the weird angles, but we're going for smooth. And here's what the inside will look like. One recommendation I have here is that if you're going to make a bed inside of the tomb, this is the time to do it. I thought it would be easy to do it after the fact, but it was really, really hard to get your hand inside of the tomb and make the bed. So make your shell over a form here and then coat it with the molting plaster. Now I've made another batch of plaster and now I'm going to do the outside of the tomb. I'm first starting at the doorway since that's the most important part and I'm just making sure that my future stone door will fit nicely into this opening. I'm plastering up the top and the sides. I'm not too concerned with the back. I'm working on the most important parts first and that would be the doorway. The doorway just took a really long time to get right. I'm just putting in some grooves on the side to kind of mimic the rock feel of my original tomb that came with the set. Um, I could have done a little bit better job here. I was in a rush and I did want it to be a little bit smoother. And the top just wasn't as flat as I would like to be. I ran the knife over it, but I still couldn't get it perfectly flat. It's just one of the things about plaster is it'll do what it wants to do. And sometimes you just have to go with it. All right, I'm trimming up the bottom of the plaster now. I'm getting rid of the extra shell portion that was hanging off the edges. Just running my finger across and cutting off anything that just doesn't belong there. All right, now I'm working on the tomb door. So what I've done here is I've put my template underneath some plastic or saran wrap, and then I'm just going to dump some molding plaster on top. And I'm just gonna kind of work with it. I'm going to put the other template on top so that I can see it's like a shaping a hamburger patty. I'm shaping a plaster patty, just trying to get that shape of the door. So I can feel the bottom template with my knife and I can also see the top. What I'm doing is I'm trying to cut a very straight edge around it. As the plaster dries, it'll change in texture. So I'm going to keep running my knife over the sides to make it as smooth as possible. Then I made another batch of plaster. This will be for the bottom of the tomb so that it is a enclosed area. All right, I just have to adjust the size a little bit. And then I'm gonna push very gently the tomb top into the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work on smoothing that out on the ends. You can't see it very well with this camera angle, but I'm bringing out a little bit of plaster to the front so that I can have a little grassy gardeny area in front of the tomb so it just doesn't end abruptly. I'm just rolling the plaster patty door across the saran wrap just to make it as smooth as possible on the sides. Now I'm making another batch of plaster. And this will be for the doorway of the tomb. I'm going to smooth it out. So here, for the door to fit snugly into the entrance of the tomb, I had to bring out part of the tomb and mold it against the door. So what I did was I wrapped the door in plastic wrap so that the new plaster wouldn't stick to it. And then I'm constantly pushing it in and molding and taking it out, smoothing, pushing it in, molding, taking it out, smoothing. So this was a very time consuming process, but um, the end result I think worked really well. So I just want to be perfectly honest in saying the tomb took some skill. It's pretty advanced plastering. It just took so many stages and you had to watch everything very carefully and make sure that your timing was dead on. I definitely don't want to deter you from making the tomb. It was really fun to make. I would just say that if you're new to plastering and you're making this tomb, make sure that you have about five batches of plaster that are ready to mix at any given time so that once you make one batch, you can go straight on to the other batch. Just the plastering portion of the tomb took about two to three hours working nonstop with it. So just make sure you have enough time to get it all done. All right, so now that that is all done, I've let the plaster dry completely for a few days. And now comes the fun part of painting. I thought this pearl paint would be so beautiful. So I painted the whole tomb in the pearl color. As it dried, it just looked way too metallic, almost like a foily tomb, and that just didn't look right. 
It just wasn't what I was going for. Here it is all dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over it. At first I thought I'll just dab the white on and see what that looked like. And it didn't look good. So I'm just redoing the whole thing in white. Here's a better angle of the tomb so that you can see that half of the doorway came out from the tomb. I'm, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining that, but that was the only way that I could get the door to look good next to the tomb. You can see it a little better from here. And here I've just painted my little rock border with some khaki color paint. I've dabbed on some moss and then I'm just sticking some of these faux plant parts into a little bit of Aileen's tacky glue, putting them on there. The tomb was in a garden, so I really wanted to have that spring feel to it. The whole time I'm working on the flowers, I'm like, I need to repaint the tomb, but I really wanted to get the flowers done. And here you can see the little alleyway that the, that the tomb door can roll back and forth. It's a good angle to show it. There we go. And then after a few days of looking at this bright white tomb, I decided that I was going to repaint it for the third time. Again, I wanted the tomb to be rock, but I wasn't happy with the pure white. So I found two videos on YouTube about how to paint marble. And so I'm going to try it in miniature scale on the tomb. We'll just see what happens. What I've got here is some of the same white that I used to paint the tomb. And I've also got three blotches of gray. I'm going to leave one gray for detailing the veins of the marble. And the other two grays I'm going to mix with the white just to have some different shading. I've also got my, my beloved pearl white on the side. I'm going to use that as an accent color. And I've also got a water bottle on the side. Apparently that's the key to doing this marbling technique is the water. It'll help all of the colors kind of smooth into one. So here I'm just putting in the veining. I'm dabbing on the whitish gray colors and I'm spraying with water as I go. And I just keep doing this until it looks right. And now here I'm doing the door and I'm trying to make it so that no matter what direction the door is in, it still looks like it fits with the rest of the tomb, making sure that the striping goes kind of in all directions so that no matter which way the door is open, it looks pretty natural like it was cut from the marble rock. It's hard to see here, but I've covered the plants and the garden area in saran wrap and I taped it on the bottom with painter's tape. I just don't want all of the gray to get on those beautiful plants. Got the tomb a little bit more gray than I would have anticipated. I, I think I could have kept it more white, but overall I'm still really pleased with it. it. It does look more like rock to me than just the plain white. So in that respect, I like it. To recap, let's take another look at our original tomb that came with the set. And now let's take a look at the almost final version of our sepulcher. So here we have the marble stone paint job. We have the little garden and we have a door that actually opens. And inside we have a almost complete bed that was made with some air dry clay. I just have a little bit more touch up work to do on the bed. And the last final touch will be a miniature shroud that will be laying on the bed. I think this will look very nice next to our Ascension Landform 